Kramer and his kick-ass radio show. Presented by Kramer and Sherman. Can you feel the thunder, everybody? Oh, we are lighting up this studio. It is getting cray cray in here. We've got none other than the man himself, Fabricio Morongo Camos, on here on Carlos Kramer's Kick Ass Radio Show. Fabricio, real quick, a third degree black belt under Master Hoyler Gracie, a UFC fighter. And you've heard of him, you've seen him. He's fighting at UFC 179 against Josh Ockley on October 25th. How are you, Morongo? Hi, Carlo. Uh, first, thank you for the opportunity to come here and talk with you guys in your show. Of I course. It's, uh, I think the fight is a great opportunity for me. I'm so happy with that opportunity to be fighting my hometown, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. How special is that going to be for you? I mean, how many old friends are coming out and saying, hey, we're going to be there? Yeah, the gym that I, I started training Jiu-Jitsu was an affiliate with the Hoyler Gracie, uh, called Gracie Tijuca, and that gym is uh, located in the same neighborhood that the Maracanã it is, right? So the Maracanã is the biggest soccer stadium in the world, and uh, many, many uh, epic battles happen in that uh, in that place. Not just soccer soccer um, games, but. Uh, Hickson fight with Zulu there. That yeah, was where Hickson fought. Yeah, yeah it was Hickson Zulu. fight. Was uh -huh. the, back in the day, the old Valitude Stadium was the Maracanãzinho. And for me, go back there and, uh, you know, can go back on my roots and compete in that, sh in that amazing uh, place. It's going to be awesome for me. And talk to us about your beginning. A little bit on the break. I, you know, done some research on you. You've been on, by the way, my radar for so long because of, number one, you're, you're, you're such a great family man and, and inspiration to all in the community. And number two, you're out of San Diego right now and really doing so much you can to give this city exposure, help kids, and you're competing at the highest level in the world in UFC. So it's our pleasure to have you on. Oh, thank you, Carlo. Thank you. I think it's, uh, yeah, for sure. I want to be so long uh, the opportunity to come here and talk with you guys. And uh, definitely San Diego is an awesome place. I really like it here, San Diego. I make this my hometown too. And uh, I have a great support from the community here. And I always try to give back everything you guys give to me. So every time that I'm going to fight, I have support for all the fans here. I have a school located here in San Diego. Too. Tell us about that. Yeah, and how, and how, you know, the fans can get in touch with you and actually train with you. Uh, unlike any other sport, you literally can train with legends in jiu-jitsu. It's really wild. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think San Diego is one of those, uh, the cities that we have a pretty much everybody good in jiu-jitsu and good in martial arts is here, right? Like, uh, I can tell Fortelis, uh, great uh, world jiu-jitsu champion. Andrea Galvão, Alliance, and, uh, and I have opportunity when I move here, I work in the, you know, the, the, the best, I think, MMA gym that we have here in San Diego, we call Alliance, right? Uh -huh. we have, Just like, beast. A, yeah. Oh. The camp there is pretty good, too. I have opportunity to teach there a couple, a couple months, the first opportunity that I move here, and uh, Brandon Vera, Dominic Cruz, uh, Rolando, Delgado, all those kids there, they are awesome kids. I have a good, those are my, my very first friends when I say, Really? Be here, yeah. Uh -huh. And then once you grow up, today I work at uh, Team Nogueira Black House too. I coordinate there the MMA amateur team. We did, a, we did a great job with the amateurs over there. I think it's a great school if you want to uh, start competing in MMA. That's a good place to go. We have a awesome Muay Thai camp over there, a lot there with uh, Coach um, Carl, Carl Gerba. Is coming from Coach Palma too. So, San Diego, I think the, the fight community here, we all make friends and we have a great community here. I think I choose the good place to be trained. And uh, for me, my school is open for anyone too that want to come and train with us with a high level Jiu Jitsu class. Like uh, me and Leticia Ribeiro, she's nine time world champ. I think she's a uh, the best female in jiu-jitsu. In the world. In the world. I think, it, too, which yeah. happens to be your wife. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you talk about a power couple. You know, Ray, there's no Ray Rice going on in this situation. Yeah. Um, we were just talking about that with some of the, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a war machine or a Ray Rice incident and how important it is for women to have self-defense these days. Oh, yeah. I think jiu -jitsu, And children, too. Yeah, and the great jiu-jitsu is basically self-defense. That's why I think... Uh, uh, for us, we try to pass the really essence of the great jiu-jitsu. We just, we not just focus in the uh, competition aspect of the jiu-jitsu. We try to focus on the self-defense too, and I think that's one thing that the kids and the girls take a lot of advantage of. 
can you tell us about the story when I, I had read that at 17 years old you were in a Valley Tudo fight, correct, with none other than Anderson Silva. This fight went 27 minutes, is that correct? Yeah, it was 27 minutes. Uh, tell us a little about this. This is mind-boggling. Yeah. And it was one of your first MMA fights, correct? Yeah, it was, was my first. Well, what's like this, when I start Jiu-Jitsu, I start because I want to be an MMA fighter. That was my dream. I want to, when I saw UFC for the first time, I said, I need to be in the, inside that cage. I'm going to do whatever needs to take to, be, to have that opportunity in my life. And uh, I was 17, and I have a great, great, uh, we kind of cousins, we trained together since young, Cristiano Marcelo, he was also in the UFC, um, the Ultimate Fighter Show too, he competed in the UFC also. And uh, we both are really into competing in MMA. But our, our academy is a, is a Gracie Academy, it was a traditional Jiu Jitsu with Tigui, so it doesn't have uh, that much people that uh, was looking to compete in MMA back then. Right. Me and Cristiano are the only one crazies that uh, was looking for training boxing. I trained boxing before of that too. And uh, we always looking for opportunity to compete in MMA. One friend of us, he um, has a big farm in Mato Grosso do Sul. It's a country in, inside the Brazil. It's really, really into the country, right? He, uh, he knows that show they have a dad and he asks us if you want to compete the show called the best regional fight uh -huh. right? so come people from all over Brazil to compete in that place and it was pretty much uh, bad enough of altitude right and was a tournament I remember that when we arrived there I drive it we, we don't drive but we go by bus it was 17 hours no way <laughs> yeah 17 hours by bus from Rio de Janeiro where Mato Grosso do Sul was Wow so we pretty much arrived there we, we just have a time to arrive in the place we go to the waiting we make the weight and we fight the other day. Right? Hey, now that's dedication. I yeah. mean, that is just complete passion for the sport. Now, had you heard of Anderson Silva? Had he no. made a name at all for himself? No. I remember when I was talking to uh, uh, Big Nog, uh, Rodrigo Noguera, mm -hmm. he, w he had told me that his mom asked, uh, who's that skinny guy who keeps sleeping on our couch? People yeah. didn't know him much that, no, yeah. back same, then. Same thing with me. When I arrived there, they told me, look, I have one guy. He's the... Uh, He's the more dangerous fighter we have here. He's in your weight class. I say, okay, no problem. <laughs> I train jiu-jitsu. <laughs> <Right? laughs> That's what I think, right? So then I, I end fight with one guy that was a Pelé student. I remember he was Pelé student because of Pelé, Jose Pelé Landi was in his corner. So I, I beat that guy. I knock him out. I mount on the guy, throw a couple of punches. The ref stopped the fight. He was he kind of passed out. It was Eliezer Ninja. Hmm. And then the second fight was against uh, Anderson that won him match also, right? Besides fight with others was a tournament, so you gotta do one match before, right? So then I, when I when I when I saw him, I say, oh man, this guy's too skinny. I wanna be all right, just all right with that guy. Uh -huh. But then when I go inside, the, the, it was a it was a ring, and the rules. I remember we was allowed to uh, grab the ropes. The floor was pretty slippery. It was like a really really for love. Nobody was doing that for money back then because I remember it was like a. 10,000 reais, something like a $500, just for somebody that win. Uh -huh. If the winner make a $500, the one that lose... Nothing. Win. Yeah, nothing. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, and, and how were you health-wise after that fight? I was, I was pretty good. I remember that when I finished the fight, it was like, a, you know, I was not offered too much resistance. After like a 27 minutes, I was exhausted. I was laying on the ground, and uh, Anderson was kicking my legs. He managed to keep the fight stand up longer. I tried to exchange it for him, but uh, since since then, that's one of the things I talk with all all the people that uh, sometimes criticize, sometimes uh, talk about Anderson Silva. I think Anderson Silva is the uh, biggest phenom that MMA uh, and the martial arts saw live competing. Because I wish I wish to be in the Bruce Lee uh, time, so I could see Bruce Lee, but I I, I don't, and uh, I have opportunity to watch Anderson Silva. I think he's the biggest one. We'll be talking Anderson Silva and a whole lot more. I'm with Morongo, Fabricio Camoz, UFC fighter. And we're listening to Carlos Kramer's Kick-Ass Radio. We'll be right back. We are back. We've got UFC phenom Fabricio Morongo Camoz in the house. Fabricio, we've been talking. We've been giving a lot of shout-outs to a lot of our friends, a lot of your, your contemporaries, uh, you know, 
Black House team Noguera. We were talking, you know, you've got to mention Professor Johnny Faria, and he just won uh, a championship in the uh, American Nationals. Oh, yeah, our team doing great. I think uh, uh, Johnny, Elias, um, you know, Rodrigo Munduruca that's here now too, Regis, everybody's doing a great job with the Grace Maita here. I think uh, Master Holly, when he decided to make his uh, move here to America, he chose San Diego really good and make us a, how can I say, a very strong team right here. I think that uh, what makes us different than the others that we try to follow the way that uh, Hoyler uh, act and teaching them at. So we, we try to copy the school and the discipline that we learn in our school. Now let's talk a little bit about your beginning. How, how did you get into martial arts when you were a kid? Were you drawn to that? I know soccer is huge over in Brazil where you're from. Yeah. Did you deviate from that and say, hey, I, I need a little more contact? Yeah, soccer is huge in uh, my family. I have a, how can I say, a very good reference about that. My grandfather used to play for the soccer national team in Brazil. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, so uh, my family was really into sports and they, they, um, they, you know, create a lot of motivation for me to uh, looking for sports. But I was not really good playing soccer. I was better kicking the legs than the ball, right? <laughs> so then I... Uh, it first started, yeah, right? Yeah. Right there. <laughs> yeah. So then I start with... Um, I trained judo with eight years old. And then I trained, I trained a little bit taekwondo with ten. In the same school they have a taekwondo, they used to have a Muay Thai too. So I trained a little bit box talent days, they call that in Brazil, in uh, taekwondo. But uh, with the 13 years old, I start training at uh, Grace Tijuca was the gym that was one an affiliate, the Master Holy Grace, that was back in uh, 91, if I'm not wrong. And uh, I started training with um, with the Master Holy over there. I have a great instructors in that gym. Uh, I remember the instructor was uh, Marcelo Machado, Saulo Ribeiro, Vinicius Aieta. Wow. And uh, Holy was there like a, two times a week. He used to train there. But uh, once I start training there, I get love the, the place and love the environment. I was really hungry to compete, so I put myself in most of the tournaments that I could compete back then. And uh, I start build a relationship with uh, the whole team and uh, with the Master Holler also. And I start going more and more to Gracie Maita, where Master Elio Gracie used to teach her privates. Wow. Yeah, Hoke Grace. Many, many times I have opportunity to be in the mat and, and watch Master Hel uh, Elio Gracie teaching a class and Master Hoke teaching a class and uh, especially Holly Grace, Master Holly Grace teaching a class. And I think that build the way that I teach right now, that the build the way that I try to, you know, pass the information for my students. And I think on my gym, I try to copy the way that I learned with the master uh, Hoyler and uh, the whole Grace of my team. You know, what, a, what an incredible experience for that, you know, growing up in that and actually having that luxury of being with the best of the best of jiu-jitsu. Uh, your relationship with Master Hoyler, you guys are tight to, to today. And, oh, yeah. I mean, what a, what a special thing. And he's such a, uh, a great friend and teacher to so many as well. Oh, yeah. He's simply, he, he always there for me with a huge inspiration. I, all of my MMA fights, I try to get him on my corner. I feel confidence when I have him there. Uh, just because the relationship that we built during those, those years that we, we trained together. And I learned with him. I see pretty much all his fights. I was there on, on his camp, trained with him and tried to help more than I can. Uh, since I was a kid, I was, um, you know, they, they request me to help on their training for MMA. And I see many camps from Hickson Grace also. I see camps from uh, the whole uh, world. Since the world's number one, if I'm not wrong, was a 96 or 94, 95, something like that. Since their first world, I saw, I trained with them for all those camps. So I think that's build a relationship that go beyond the mat and what you do outside. I think Hoyler is an example for me inside and outside the mat. We, uh, and I always try to give back as much as I can to the jiu-jitsu community, um, our MMA fighters out here, but you know, I'm just so blessed to still be competing you know, as well on a much lower level, of course, but it really is fulfilling to me. It's changed my life. And yeah. when did you start hitting your groove? Do you remember, was it as a blue belt, a purple belt? Yeah. I mean, when did you just start submitting everybody you were going against and feeling it? Yeah, I, I have a very good record. I think I win something like a 
12 times the Rio de Janeiro state champ. I win a, I win a couple, I win Brazilian nationals too, but uh, for me, in some point of my career, when I think when I was, after fight with Anderson Silva, I was purple belt back then with the 17 years old. After I lost that fight, I turned myself pretty much into an MMA fighter. Uh -huh. Because after that, I start training way more boxing, because I want to get better striking. I start training way more um, conditioning, training wrestling, and I was blessed with the people that I have surround me. Because uh, Master Holly was there, he uh, incentive, how can I say, he gave me like, a, okay, keep on going, but uh, I need to go train in another place to improve my boxing. I need to go train in another place to improve my wrestling. And back then, does not have that much the people looking for fight MMA, especially on my gym. Pretty much everybody just trained with the gi. Right. And I was the only one that I think even today I am the only one Grace my type representative in the UFC. So uh, from our gym, that uh, all the the information the Holly give to me, I try to pass that and show that uh, in the MMA aspect, the Grace Jiu Jitsu is very well to see too. Pretty much what I do is like a self defense. Right. And, and you know what? We were talking a little over the break with you and Leticia over there at Gracie South Bay. Anybody here listening to the show, get on out there. Take a free class. You know, get involved with it. You've got two of the best instructors and world champions, right, a, a, that you could ever work with. Your wife is, you know, literally the best jujitsu gal on the planet. So okay. big props and let her know I say hi and support as well. Okay, for sure, I will. Um, of course, of course. I want to know from you. What separates you from someone else? Well, how have you gotten to get to this level? Mm -hmm. I know you've trained your ass off your entire life and put in the work, but your mind has to be super incredibly strong. How do you train your mind as well? Yeah, I think it, it's like these. Some things uh, you demand to train to get better, some things you're born with. I think I was born like that. I always, the competition was inside me more than I expect. Uh -huh. So everything, if I was playing soccer, I need to win that game. Uh -huh. I was like, a, when I start trying fighting, I see that my body has the ability to do some moves that maybe people don't want to be able to do it. And that's give me more motivation to keep on going. So at the beginning was a lot of work, was a lot of frustration because uh, I didn't score the moves that I want to. Sometimes I couldn't beat so fast. Sometimes I was too slow. And... Um, when I really focus on get my know my body better, know how to move, and know how to think in before you move, that start make a huge difference for me. So that make it better for me to learn the other martial arts that I was looking to improve too, not just on jiu-jitsu. I was trying to train wrestling, start to train uh, boxing, start to train muay thai. So that everything that uh, you know I could focus more, I get a better. How can I say? knowledge about the, mo the movements. And then our school, we try to do that with our students too. We try to pass them as a system because first you're gonna learn how to crawl, then you're gonna learn how to walk, and then you're gonna learn how to run. So for us, since the basic is, we're taking care of a lot of our white belts. Because I think when you feed our white belts with the good information, they're gonna become a good blue belt, so then for a, a good black belt. And future leaders for you as well. Oh, yeah. one, one great thing about your school is that you do, as we were talking about, you're focusing on the kids. And I can't say this enough to parents out there. If you really want your, self, your, your child to learn self-confidence, discipline, to be humble, to be respectful, have him or her go to a jiu-jitsu class. And I can't think of better instructors than uh, you and Leticia as well. Oh, thank you, Carlos. Yeah, jiu-jitsu, I think, is a great tool for the parents to learn how to deal with that kid that sometimes has a a lot of energy. Uh huh. Sometimes maybe aggression. Oh, maybe, maybe aggression. Maybe sometimes he uh, is too shy. Sometimes we have that case. Uh huh. Kids they don't like, talk too much, and then they learn how to interact with the other team, with the other kids in the environment that they are learning. And we put everybody together because sometimes the kid is great playing football, right? But he know he don't know how to play from his back, right? Right. right. And then all the other one don't play football that good, but from his back he's really good. Yeah. So he learn how to deal with the difference since the beginning and respect when somebody's not as good as you. And uh, we're doing a great job there. I think that's more Leticia's part. I mean, because I think when I go there, I go more to play with the kids than something else. Oh, uh, how fun. Yeah, it's very fun. I think the kids there, they, they, 
uh, they create a bond of friendship that uh, we know every, everyone that since they, day one they stop the gym and we create a special care about them, right? A special place, that's Gracie South Bay. Uh, Morongo, what's next for you? Any uh, visions after this UFC uh, 179? Well, that's the thing that's in my mind right now. Uh -huh. we, uh, you know, I think that's a great opportunity that UFC give me one more time. Uh, be there fighting for my home, my hometown, and uh, front of the crowd that I be, you know, people that <coughs> knows me since I start competing in uh, jiu-jitsu. I think that's a great opportunity to I go there and uh, show everybody that uh, all those years training, all the experience that I got inside and outside the octagon, gonna make the difference in that day. And I cannot think of another result before I have my hand raised right there on that night, and uh, you know, one more, one more victory in UFC. We have been blessed and so fired up to have Fabricio Morongo Camoz in the house. Thank the you, champ, guys. don't forget about his fight October 25th, and that's UFC 179. Fabricio, thank you for being here. Thank you guys for the opportunity. I hope to see you guys again. All right, you're listening to Carlos Kramer's Kick-Ass Radio Show. We'll see you next time. Awesome, brother. Oh, thank that you very was much. Great. Uh, that was nice. Yeah. Man. Thank you. Good flow. You see how